Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a red-black control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Valky and Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, so we do have the flexibility of casting the 2-mana creature, but for the most part we're interested in casting the 7-mana Planeswalker, starts out at 5 loyalty and gives us an emblem right away, saying we can play cards exiled with Tybalt and spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells, and all three of Tybalt's abilities exile cards in some way. The plus 2 will exile the top card of each player's library, the minus 3 exiles target artifact or creature, and the minus 8 exiles all graveyards and gives us 3 red mana to start casting those cards out of exile. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we are a control deck, so you'll see plenty of removal, some discard effects, and some other planeswalkers as well to help us win the game, and a few ramp artifacts to maybe get Tybalt in play a couple turns sooner. So starting out at 1 mana, we've got some spot removal with Bloodchief's Thirst, which can also be kicked, Frostbite, Lightning Bolt and Light Up the Night. We've got more spot removal at 2 mana, with Chainer's Edict, which is a sacrifice effect that can also be flashed back for 7 mana. Then we've got Feed the Swarm, that can deal with creatures or enchantments, which is pretty rare in a red-black deck. We've got Heartless Act, a Braid can deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact. Angras Rampage can make the opponent sacrifice an artifact, creature or planeswalker. And then Cut to Ribbons deals 4 damage to a creature, and then thanks to Aftermath we can still cast Ribbons later in the game as a nice finisher. And Shadow Skull Smashing can be played as a land or as a removal spell to deal with creatures and planeswalkers. And 3 mana Soul Shatter can make the opponent sacrifice their most expensive creature or planeswalker. Bone Crusher can first use the Stomp Adventure to deal 2 damage, and then a 4-3 creature afterwards. Call Against Command can deal 2 damage, make the opponent discard a card, destroy an artifact or return a creature from our graveyard to our hand, and we get to choose two different modes. We've got Unlicensed Disintegration, destroying a creature and dealing 3 damage to the opponent if we control an artifact. And Bedevil can destroy an artifact, creature or planeswalker at instant speed. And there's even a Never to Return, which can destroy a creature or planeswalker, and then Aftermath allows us to exile a card from a graveyard, in addition to making a 2-2 zombie token. And at 4 mana, Hagra Mauling can be played as a tap land or as a creature removal spell. Then we also have a couple sweeper effects between Meat Hook Massacre, giving all creatures minus X minus X, plays well with all our ramp artifacts. At 3 mana, there's Sweltering Suns, dealing 3 damage to each creature, but can also be cycled in matchups where we don't need it. At 4 mana, Extinction Event can exile all even or odd costed creatures, and Languish gives all creatures minus 4 minus 4. At 5 mana, Crux of Fate can destroy all dragons or all non-dragon creatures, and at 6 mana, Blood on the Snow can also destroy all creatures or all planeswalkers, while potentially returning a creature or planeswalker from our graveyard to the battlefield if we spend snow mana to cast it, and we do have plenty of snow lands in our mana base to support it. Then we also have a few discard effects, at 1 mana there's Duress, as well as Thoughtseize. At 2 mana we've got Agonizing Remorse and Check for Traps as targeted discard effects. And we also have some untargeted discard, with Croxa making the opponent discard, and we can eventually escape the Elder Giant out of our graveyard to give us access to a powerful 6-6 finisher. And even Davriel at 3 mana, a Planeswalker, that can make the opponent discard several times. Then we also have some mana acceleration, with that 1 mana Dark Ritual adding triple black can lead to some very explosive turns. At 2 mana we've got a couple ramp artifacts between Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone. And at 4 mana there's even more ramp, with Solemn finding a basic land when he enters and drawing a card when he dies, good at protecting our planeswalkers as well. Key to the Archive and 2 mana, besides letting us draft a card out of the very powerful 15 card spellbook. We've got Hedron Archive, as well as Firemind Vessel as more ramp artifacts. Then Chandra, powerful planeswalker that can also add double red to our mana pool with the second plus one, can potentially cast Tybalt on the following turn. Then Fires of Invention, not a typical ramp card, but can still generate a big mana advantage if we can cast two expensive spells in the same turn. And while it is a bit of a nombo with our ramp artifacts and treasures, we can still just cast an expensive spell normally, and then cast a second spell for free using Fire's ability. And we also have a few mana sinks in our mana base, like creature lands and activated abilities, that also synergize with Fires, as we can spend our mana on those while still casting two spells in the same turn. 
And then at 5 mana, we've got Goldspan Dragon, which can also generate a big mana advantage by making a treasure when he attacks, which we can then sacrifice for 2 mana instead of just 1. Then we've got a ton of Planeswalkers in the deck. We already covered Davriel and at 4 mana Chandra, which can minus 3 to deal 4 damage to a creature, so perfect for protecting itself and then leveraging the various plus 1 abilities. We've got Karn generating Karn advantage with the plus 1 and minus 1. Can also make some Karnstruct tokens with a minus 2. We've got Sorin the Mirthless, making 2-3 vampires with flying and lifelink, can generate card advantage with the plus 1. And Angrath can steal opposing creatures, even destroy them if they had mana value 3 or less, or make the opponent discard with the plus 1. And then the minus 8 can also deal a ton of damage. And then at 6 mana, some of our finishers include Liliana Dreadhorde General, which draws a card whenever our creatures die. The plus 1 makes a 2-2 zombie token, the minus 4 makes each player sacrifice 2 creatures, the ultimate also game winning. Professor Onyx makes the opponent sacrifice their largest creature, and the plus 1 generates card advantage, while the passive Magecraft can gain some life and drain the opponent to death. Chandra Awakened Inferno can wipe the board with a minus 3, can individually take care of a larger creature or planeswalker with a minus X, and the plus 2 will also slowly kill the opponent, while Ugin the Ineffable gives all our colorless cards a discount, so plays well with all our artifacts, and the plus 1 makes a 2-2 spirit that generates card advantage, while the minus 3 can destroy a permanent that's at least one or more colors. Then we also have a couple card draw effects in the deck with that 2 mana Maze Mind Tome, which can spend 2 mana to draw a card, or we can simply tap it to scry 1 to smooth out our draws, eventually gaining 4 life. Phyrexian Arena draws an extra card at the cost of 1 life each turn. We've got Seasoned Pyromancer, which can smooth out our draws, can also play it when empty handed to simply draw 2, and can also be exiled from our graveyard to make 2 elemental tokens. We've got at 4 mana the Unexpected Windfall, which besides ramping into Tybalt, also gives us a bit of card selection, maybe get rid of removal spells we don't need to find more action. And then we also have at 5 mana the Ox of Agonos, which when it enters makes us discard our hand to draw 3, so better when played empty-handed. Can also be escaped out of our graveyard for double red by exiling 8 other cards from our graveyard, in which case it enters with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And then Goblin Dark Dwellers, a 4-4 with Menace, that when it enters, can cast Target Instant or Sorcery with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard without paying its mana cost. And Glorybringer has removal stapled onto it, as it can exert to deal 4 damage to target a non-dragon creature an opponent controls. At 4 mana we can generate more card advantage with Gonti, a 2-3 with Death Touch, so good at protecting our Planeswalkers, and then it gets to take a look at the top 4 cards of the opponent's library, exile one of those cards that we can then cast, ignoring all mana requirements. And at 4 mana there's also Rekindling Phoenix, a 4-3 creature with flying, that's very hard to kill because it gets replaced by an 0-1 elemental token that gets sacrificed in our upkeep to bring back the Phoenix from our graveyard. And then last but not least, we've got Captive Audience, a 7-man enchantment that will enter the battlefield under the opponent's control, and then at the beginning of their upkeep, they have to choose one mode that hasn't been chosen yet, between their life total becomes 4, they discard their hand, or each opponent, which is us, creates 5 2-2 two -two black zombie creature tokens. Then our mana base has snow-covered basics to support Blood on the Snow and Frostbite. We've got a few activated abilities with Castle to draw cards, We've got some creature lands with Hive and Den of the Bugbear, as well as Faceless Haven, now a 3-3 after the Alchemy nerf, and Mobilize District is cheaper to activate the more legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. And then we also have Karn's Bastion, which can proliferate, makes it easier to maybe ultimate our planeswalkers a turn sooner by adding an extra loyalty to them. And then a ton of mana fixing, including some fetch lands like Fabled Passage, Expanse, and Evolving Wilds, which are also useful for escaping our creatures like Croxa and Ox of Agonos, just puts an extra card in the graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Narset of the Ancient Way, Jeskai Control. So Chainer's Edict, Extinction Events, not particularly useful, only two lands means I'm gonna mulligan. Alright, not the best hand, but Maze Mind Tome goes a long way, so I'll try it. And then Bone Crusher can maybe apply pressure to a Planeswalker. And we might want to go for the full value Maze Mind Tomb. So I'm not going to scry, instead, I'm going to try and draw as many cards as possible.
Although it could still be worth it to try and play the 4 3 Bone Crusher. Let's see, Narset comes down with 4 loyalty, goes up to 5. I guess between like an end of turn burn spell untap and like play another burn spell, we might be able to deal with Narset. So, yeah, I'll wait. And we'll draw with 2 end of turn. Since their opponent's likely to answer the 4 3 anyways. Midnight Clock, a nice target for Colagan's command. Ooh, and a Rekindling Phoenix could be difficult to answer for the opponent as well. So I don't mind playing Phoenix here. And then I can always play Smashing as a land to give access to Goldspan. But Colagan's to blow up Midnight Clock is going to be quite powerful. So Narsets, we'll see if they plus or minus. They could have another burn spell to finish off the 0-1 elemental, but opponent's going to plus instead. Could see a bounce spell on Phoenix, which would be more effective. Yeah, Brazen Borrower. Alright, so now what? I guess we just play Goldspan and then Storm finishes off Narsets. So I could scry towards the land, but playing Smashing is still fine. Soul Shatter also an answer, but getting a gold span in place seems worth it. And next turn, if our opponent replays Narset and minuses, we have the option of uh, maybe Colgan's commands, finish off Narset and Midnight Clock, which isn't too bad. Celestus, another artifact. I think Midnight Clock is still more threatening between the two, and it's a fairy master of time. Can plus and then probably has to uh, minus on Goldspan before he gets a chance to attack. And then now I might want to scry with Maze Mind to him just to keep hitting my land drops. Chainer Seedic, not very useful. Do I scry again on upkeep? Or I can just draw and go for the Colagans command, finish off the fairy Midnight Clock. Yeah, I guess we'll just take our draw step. Right, land is good. Move to combats. See to ferry minus here. Also have the option of just playing a rekindling phoenix and drawing with Maze Mind Tome. Is that better than dealing with clock into ferry? Probably not. Could also play Bone Crusher, but then I'm playing into a sweeper too much, I think. So I'll draw in case of a tapped lands. Chandra, not a bad draw either. I guess the gold span is still gonna stay phased out in the opponent's turn, so I could have gone for Bone Crusher for the added pressure. Chandra cannot minus on gold span, so it's gonna plus instead. And finds a Cold Steel Heart. Yeah, so phasing out Goldspan actually kind of saved it here. And now I can play Tybalt if I want to. Although I might want to finish off Chandra, which I could with a Soul Shatter, but then I'm out of answers for Narset. So... I guess we'll start by drawing here. And then attack Chandra and probably play 
Say bolts. Plus. Uh, Rampage. Also an answer to Chandra. Opponent's gonna sort the gold spam. They waited until after we attacked, which is interesting. I guess they wanted a clean answer for rekindling Phoenix. So that all worked out. And this double vision could also be quite effective. Double vision into. Rampage, make them sacrifice two planeswalkers. Mind, body, and soul must be Narsets could maybe deal with Tybalt if they've got an expensive card to discard. Alright, it's gonna be time wipe for five damage. Two cards in hands. Might as well start by plussing. And then we'll see if they have a counterspell for double vision. Ooh, this is gonna be juicy. Making them sacrifice two artifacts also would have been pretty effective. Their opponent's falling further and further behind. And once we get to keep up Absorb Energy, it's going to be very difficult for the opponent to come back. Ah, Lower Hold Command for 3 damage, still 1 short. They could have played their uh, Brazen Borrower first and then chosen the plus 1 plus 2 in haste mode to actually finish off our Planeswalker instead, but I guess they maybe feared one mana removal. Spellbinder can have a look, but don't think that's gonna matter too much here. Makes Phoenix more expensive. And Tybalt is just relentless here. So, what's next? So many options. Getting another Planeswalker down sounds appealing. And then I want to try and keep up Absorb Energy. So then I still have a little bit of mana to spend, but not enough for anything significant. I think that's still the play. Soul Pass. Can always Soul Shatter or cycle Sweltering Suns. So if they animate their Cave of the Frost Dragon, we can just Soul Shatter it instead. Unless they also have enough mana to play Brazen Borrower to sacrifice that instead. I guess that's a possibility. But it's just gonna activate Celestis instead to let them loot. And a borrow time will counter. Alright, opponent gives us a good game. And they explode. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against Sithis, Harvest's Hand, and Shaman deck. And my hand is pretty reasonable. Maybe a bit light on answers to turn to Sithis, but probably go for tapped Hagra Mauling. And then turn to Cold Steel Hearts. Turn three double spell Davriel Duress. Dinner for opponents gonna run out. Sithis turn two, Curse of Silence delays Tybalt, although opponent actually named Valky. So I can still play Tybalt for 7 mana, which is probably what we actually wanted to cast. It's interesting how that interaction works. Opponent does run out Sithis, so can we punish them with removal off the top? We cannot. 
All right, then we'll have a look with Duress and probably go for Davriel. Could also Karn and Plus. Is that better? I think I would rather check out their hand first. And what do we see? Some creature removal. Hallowed Haunting could be problematic since we don't have enchantment removal. So I think that's the pick here. And then Davriel can minus. Opponent's probably going to be playing the inversion as a tap land. And then we're not too worried about cards like pacifism when we don't present any creatures early. So they could still Sentinel's Mark to finish off Davriel, draw a card. And hopefully we'll find removal soon. We get an extra land. Probably go for a tap to Den. And then next turn I can Liliana minus four. So hoping they play another creature here. Higher Mancer's Cage, an answer to Karn. Languish, probably a better answer than Liliana, so we can plus instead of minus. And then we can just play a Tybalt next turn. Replay Sithis. Goblin Dark Dwellers can replay a Duress. Not a Languish, unfortunately. So maybe I do Liliana minus four. Since minusing Tybalt on Sithis doesn't let us cast the... Uh, Commander, as it's going to go back to the command zone. The undead make great and then Tybalt can just start plussing instead. Bounding Gold's nice answer to Liliana, so glad that's not enchanting at Tybalt. And Rampage, another. Nice solution to Sithis. So I could Dark Dwellers first check out their hand with the rest just in case they have another answer to my Planeswalkers. Just to be safe. And all that glitters, probably not a concern here. So might as well take Pacifism, which answers Dark Dwellers. And then next turn it's time for our commander. All right, borrow time would have been an answer to Tybalt, so happy with that exchange. Plus two. So yeah, that uh, Curse of Silence did not pan out. Sethus we can answer in a multitude of ways. Dark Ritual. So, do we want to stomp Sithis? That seems fine. And then might as well Dark Ritual. Can play Solemn. And play Bone Crusher. Rampage to clean up Dryads. And then we can uh, refresh our hands after going Mace Mind Tome into Ox. And then Tybalt can also ultimate at some point. And that does it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw facing Nylea Keen-Eyed, which is an enchantment which we cannot really deal with. 
but we can hopefully go over the top. Now if this sounds kind of awkward because while I do have a fires I can eventually cast, it's with a ramp artifact, so that limits its use. And then we're very far from ever casting Tybalt still. So I think this is a mulligan situation. Okay, this is more promising. A lot of tapped lands, but a dark ritual could lead to some fireworks. And we redrew fires. So Temple look for an untapped land, perhaps. Hedron Archive. That one is hard to turn down when we have a dark ritual. So I th think I'll keep it. And then hope they play Mana Creature Weekend Bolts, and then on the following turn we can ritual out a Hedron Archive, perhaps. Azusa into a land. Now my summon still comes into play tapped, so I might want to fetch first. And then don't care too much about Azusa, since her opponent's clearly out of lands in hand, so don't need to edict it. A little concerned about artifacts removal if we go ritual into archive. Definitely a concern, but I think I still go for it. And then next turn we can Fires plus Chainer's Edict. And hopefully the turn after, play Tybalt or Captive Audience. Triumph finds a couple more lands that they can play with Azusa. So nice combo into Nylia. Heartless Act, more removal. Now, I wouldn't be able to play Heartless Act at instant speed because of fires, but that's okay. Nylia is a creature, but not for long. And there's a land, perfect. So we can actually exile Nylia, although they can easily replay it for 6 mana. Since we won't gain control of it with uh, Tybalt. So that's probably not all that useful. So instead I can captive audience first before playing Tybalt to eventually make those zombies to protect our planeswalker. Or I could Tybalt, Heartless Act, the Circle of Dreams Druid to decrease their devotion, make it unlikely that they can turn Nylia into a creature. And then Tybalt can start plussing. Both are reasonable. Let's captive audience first. Opponent could discard their one card here. Opponent goes down to four instead. Okay. Living dangerously. Leyline turns on Nylia again, so glad I didn't play Tybalt. And a regrowth gets back their Circle of Dreams through it, and now they can discard their hands to the captive audience. Seasoned Pyromancer, an excellent draw too. So that'll draw two cards. And then... Now it might be worth it to... play Tybalt and then minus on Nylia. Would leave me at two loyalty. Can also sacrifice Hedron Archive next turn since we have the fires anyways. So close call. I think exiling Nalia is fine. I guess her opponent can also put counters on their team. So they might go for that one instead of replaying Nalia. We'll see what happens. 
opponent replace Nylea. Ranger class. And we'll trade. The rest not very useful. So next turn we get to five zombies. One mana short of replaying Tybalt. Can still use the Seasoned Pyromancer as a mana sink. So probably Guardian Idol for free. And then pass with the intent of making Pyromancer tokens. And our opponent will have to play defense here. Ugin shows up a little too late to destroy the captive audience. It's gonna plus. So they've got five blockers. I think I still go for Pyromancer over sacrificing Hedron Archive. Karn's a draw. Okay, so I can Karn for free, maybe plus, see if I can find a land to then play Tybalt. Very close to just killing them. If they give us Shadow Skull Smashing, we can kill them. So we get a Guild Gate instead, which is still enough to then play a uh, Tybalt here for two mana. And we want to keep Hedron Archive uncracked. In fact, I could sacrifice it first in case I find something more useful. Ooh, a Goldspan Dragon. That seems pretty good. No Reach creatures on the other side. So that can just end the game. All right. So it ended up being a pretty interesting game. And Fires of Invention definitely did a lot of work in the later turns. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Emery. And I do have a Stomp to deal with Emery. Remorse can even exile cards from their graveyard if needed. But I'm not loving the triple 4-drop situation with only two lands. We're on the draw, so more likely to pick up some lands naturally. So I guess we can give this a shot. And then I want to fetch Mountain right away. Alright, Spiked Pit Trap still allows a turn to Emery here. Which we'll have to probably stomp. Although it doesn't feel great to kill Emery when it also kind of stacks with the commander attacks. So the more artifacts they play, the easier it is to play Emery, even if we already killed it once or twice. Spellbomb in their graveyard, so... Not the most stocked graveyard right now. But Emery can still, of course, provide card advantage. Which we probably want to avoid. So I think I'm still okay stomping here. Alright, tramp into Manifold Key, replay Emery. In which milled Metalwork Colossus. So that could be more problematic. So I guess Light of the Night, a nice pickup, lets me answer Emery once again. I guess I don't even have to pay X equals 2, but it doesn't matter here. And we're just gonna keep killing Emery until they can no longer cast it. At least that's the plan. 
Bedevil another answer. Or I could languish, since Bedevil also deals with artifacts. Emery down. So now costs 5 mana, actually 9 mana, but to get a 4 mana discount. So opponent replays Emery. And Hagra Mauling could be an answer, or I could keep hitting my land drops and just bedevil here. Think that might be better. Alright. Did not imagine we were going to kill Emery this many times in a row, but here we are. Mystic Forge to provide card advantage would have been a nice target for Bedevil, although Tybalt can also exile artifacts with a minus. Okay, so this might be a good turn for Hedron Archive into Bonecrusher. Could also try and exile Metalwork Colossus, but that doesn't seem like a priority. So if I archive, I can still at least play the Bone Crusher, or I could archive into Key to the Archive as well. If I don't care about a 4-3, and then I can maybe discard Remorse to whatever I draft out of the spellbook here. Counterspell, Doomblade, Putrefy. Putrefy also deals with artifacts, so it might be slightly better. Um, Counterspell, I guess... Also good to have, but we're more of a tap-out control deck, so might be awkward to keep up the double blue from Key. And then Tybalt can minus to deal with the Mystic Forge. Honored Heirloom can deal with our graveyard too, potentially. I saw light up the night before we can flash it back. And there's Emery. Alright. Extinction event, another answer. So let's see here. If I were to play Tybalt, I'm unable to extinction, but I can putrefy. So I can putrefy Emery, and then Tybalt deals with Mystic Forge. So we can also cast the Mystic Forge eventually. Alright, so Emery... Up to 8 mana, they can play it once again. And I guess the Springjaw Trap can deal damage to any target, so it finishes off Tybalt, but we can still replay it with the commander tanks. And so ends the game. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Vadric, Astral Archmage, Blue Red Spells. And my hand's a little bit too slow, I think. No early removal for Vadric, and only two lands. This is much better. Probably play Mauling as a tapped land, and then Light of the Night and answer to Vadric. The rest to check out their hand, but I can maybe wait until turn two. Do have the option of playing Valky at two mana, but don't think that's going to be worth it. Okay, Essence Scatter, we don't care about too much. Dragonfire, Awakening. I think taking Awakening makes sense. Dragonfire, not enough to finish off any of my Planeswalkers. And we don't have any creatures we need to cast into Essence Scatter. Heartless Act can deal with Electromancer, and then Light of the Night can deal with Vadric if they play it next turn. Of 
Could have also gone the other way around. But Light of the Night can also maybe deal with a Planeswalker, whereas Heartless Act cannot. Okay, so we'll just play Line of Pass. Maybe our opponent wants to play Vadric and keep up one of their two mana instants that get a discount, or just wait even longer. But as far as we know, it's safe to play Angrath. Opponent's gonna draw two in response. And they can discard one. No fire, no steel. Electrodominance for two, plus a dragon fire enough to deal with Angrath. So that was a relatively clean answer. Well, next turn we can play Tybalt. And hopefully they're out of answers for our Planeswalker here. Augur resolves, but could find a counterspell, and oof, Disdainful Stroke's unfortunate. Well, so can't play Tybalt now. Need to find another discard spell or some other expensive card to bait out the counter. Don't really care about killing Augur of Bolas, so... Alright, Thought Seize is perfect. And then we have the extra land to play Tybalt. If I didn't have the extra land, I probably would have waited. So we don't give them the opportunity to uh, draw into an answer. Syncopate for one is interesting. So I can resolve Tybalt if I don't pay the one. Or I can pay the one and also take Disdainful Stroke. And hope they don't have a third answer. I think getting Tybalt in play might be more important. Yeah, I'll decline. And then... Probably better to plus in case of another burn spell, although it is tempting to minus some Midnight Clock. And yeah, opponent would have drawn Dismiss, which could have countered Tybalt had we... paid the one and taken Disdainful Stroke. And our opponent concedes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, so Grixis, Control. And what do we think of this hand? Couple uh, dual-faced cards which we can play as lands. Chandra, decent answer to Nicol Bolas, so I'll try it. Don't think I'll be needing Hagar Mauling. Would rather hit extra land drops. Now, Smashing could still deal with an opposing Planeswalker. So, it has that going for it. So I can probably hold that one for a little bit longer. Maybe next turn play District. Turn for Chandra. And we gotta watch out for counter spells. Alright, Knight of the Ebon Legion, we could disintegrate. Is it time for Bolas? I'll take the one. And a Predator instead. Alright, so we can disintegrate a Knight, and then Chandra can deal with Predator. Now we've got a threat on the board. And Nicol Bolas we can answer in a few ways. Probably get rid of Meat Hook Massacre. And then want to start by plussing after playing my land. Could also add mana. But I don't want to play Ox just yet, so of course could just play Tybalt and minus on Bolas. But then we don't get to cast Bola since it goes back to the command zone. But I guess I would have a Tybalt in play, which is nice. Yeah, maybe that's still worth it. Oh, this is gonna hurt. 
Don't need to fear a Pact of Negation. And we'll see if they can answer our Planeswalkers here. Alright, looks like that was good enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Captain Cisse, a legendary deck. So very important that we can answer their commander as soon as possible, and this hand certainly does a good job of killing creatures. So I'll keep. And then we do eventually need to draw a couple more lands or ramp. So we can play our own win conditions. So it is tempting to just play Valkyrie on two. And then, what do we want to take away? I guess your shrine's just bigger. So Valky can eventually turn into a 4 4. Is your opponent reluctant to play Captain? Extinction events on even also deals with Valky. So I think we will end up uh, killing Solemn with Never. And then we still have two answers at instant speed for Captain, even if they found some protection spell. There's Captain. Salt's Bolt. See if there's any protection in response. There's not. And then Soul Shatter. Better to keep for the opponent's turn. I guess I could have attacked and if they blocked I just turn Valky into Yasharn. That could have worked. Not too worried about approach as a win condition. Right, opponent goes for it. Bit of a nombo with uh, Captain Cisse, which shuffles their deck. But it does mean I need to amp up the pressure a little bit. So Den of the Bugbear will do so. And then next turn we could play Chandra to deal with Captain if they replay it. Glorybringer also decent. Although Chandra exiles, which would prevent a card draw. So kind of like that instead. Hit for three. And then we're still pretty far from an approach. Guardian Idol not enough to finish off Chandra. And multiple answers to Captain in hands and in play. So, probably minus two Chandra. And then if they have a protection spell, I can still potentially kill the captain. Ah, that worked. So now could go for Glorybringer. Might be overextending into a sweeper a little bit. But still seems fine given all the creature lands we have access to. Because if we went with Glorybringer Exert first and they have a way to give Captain CC Hexproof or Indestructible, then Chandra no longer works. Whereas this way we could have still Soul Shattered at least. Fateful Absence deals with Glorybringer, that's fine. Statue makes my stuff more expensive, that's too bad. Although activating creature lands is still pretty easy. So 
So, yeah, we can start plussing now. And then over Haven. Also seems better than activating Valky, but that's also something we can do. Suppose the upside of Haven is that we could have still cracked a clue. But we just want to try and deal as much damage as possible so we don't lose to this approach. Alright, so in the event of a protection spell, Soul Shatter is safer. Don't think I can afford to play too safe now. So we'll animate Haven and then attack with a team in full control so I can cast a Frostbite before blocks. Hope there's no protection. Seemed unlikely given that they didn't have one earlier. And then Shadrach and Plus. And then we should be able to finish them off next turn. Cast out can deal with Chandra, but goes for Valky instead. If they play Asharn, they shuffle away their approach. And our opponent should still be dead to then of the bugbear attacking and the Chandra emblems. Alright, and our opponent realizes that they're dead. Sweet. So, played against a wide variety of decks, and yeah, our Valky slash Tybalt the deck certainly quite powerful. Very similar to some of the Grixis control decks I've featured in the past, but uh, I think Tybalt at 7 mana might be even better than the 7 mana Nicol Bolas, just because we get even more card advantage from Tybalt's plus, and then uh, the flexibility of dealing with artifacts can certainly come in handy in Historic Brawl, where there's quite a few ramp artifacts floating around. So yeah, if you like a control deck with a couple Planeswalkers and lots of removal, this might be the deck for you. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.